Hey guys, in this video, we're gonna be debunking some of the myths and misconceptions behind flaxseed and its so-called anti-cancerous effects, specifically in regards to prostate cancer. If you hop on Google and you search flax seeds and prostate cancer, you're going to find a couple of different studies that ultimately promote or conclude flax seeds as a remedy for prostate cancer. However, if you dive into the research behind these studies, you come to see a couple very obvious faults in the research. And if you know anything about the true pathogenesis of prostate cancer, as we talk about in various videos on our channel, then you might become highly speculative and suspicious of these claims because at the end of the day, as I talk about in these previous videos, the true culprit of prostate cancer, there are many contributing factors such as inflammation, specifically cyclooxygenase 2 and the activation of those pathways, inflammatory cytokines or precursors like the various inflammatory prostaglandins. There's also other hormonal factors involved. But ultimately, at the back end of all these things is typically an elevation of estrogen, which can directly stimulate the growth of the prostate and prostate cancer cells, but in a wide variety of different mechanisms contributes to the pathogenesis of prostate cancer and breast cancer. In fact, it's widely accepted that about two in three cases of breast cancer is estrogen driven. And there's tons of other studies that talk about how reducing estrogen can actually alleviate or potentially cure or at the very least act as a very potent therapy for correcting breast cancer. So there's strong evidence in that realm that estrogen does drive various types of cancer. And I think that at the end of the day, the reason that there's less documented or published research behind estrogen's effect in prostate cancer comes down to the whole DHT myth and that whole market in of itself, which is a very profitable market. But the fact is that Flax seeds are incredibly estrogenic. They have major phytoestrogenic properties, and estrogen is a driver of both breast cancer and prostate cancer, again, in a couple of different mechanisms. So if you know anything about this pathogenesis, like me, you might be confused as to why there's research out there that talks about flax seeds as a remedy for prostate cancer. Now, we could dive into the subject very in depth, but there's a couple of key points that I wanna make in regards to the flaws of this research. And hopefully by the end of it, you could see that flax seeds might not be the ultimate remedy or even the sole causative factor for remedying prostate cancer in these studies. So for example, there's studies like this that basically take a group of men, two groups of men with prostate cancer, and they do a six month experiment where they add in flax seed, ground flax seed to the diets of one group and not the other. They also happen to remove the dietary fats. They put them on a lower fat diet and what they come to find is that the people that are on the lower fat diet and that are consuming ground flax seed, that their prostate cancer starts to go away and starts to clear up. And they try to point the finger at estrogen, promoting estrogen as an anti-cancer remedy in this case, but in all these other cases, like the breast cancer, it's a promoter of tumor growth and cancer development. However, what is not mentioned or covered in detail or much at all is that one of the major fatty acids in flax seeds, known as linoleic acid, is the only precursor to the production of the prostaglandin E2, which is the inflammatory prostaglandins that have been shown in dozens of study to directly contribute to prostate cancer growth and tumor growth. And the primary way in which the prostaglandin E2 contributes to prostate cancer and various types of cancer is actually by activating an enzyme in polyamine biosynthesis. And polyamines are so intertwined with prostate cancer and various types of cancer that they're more or less synonymous with cancer. You can almost guarantee that where there is cancer, there are these polyamines. And again, these are highly activated by the inflammatory prostaglandin Z2, which are produced by the linoleic acid. So linoleic acid is the key building block for inflammatory prostaglandins, specifically prostaglandin E2. In prostaglandin E2, by transcribing the enzymes in polyamine biosynthesis, contribute to cancer. And again, there are dozens of studies that go to verify the physiological mechanisms behind the inflammatory prostaglandins E2s, 
contribution to prostate cancer. So for example, checking out this study, this study explains the in-depth or complex molecular mechanisms of the inflammatory prostaglandin E2 activation of epidermal growth factor receptors and its contribution to prostate cancer or tumor proliferation. But a simple way to understand that study is that prostaglandin E2 is a mediator or a major metabolite of the inflammatory cyclooxygenase pathway. So COX-2 is an inflammatory pathway that is present in everything from prostate cancer to even hair loss. And again, tying it back to flax seeds, which contain linoleic acid, the precursor to the inflammatory prostaglandin E2, which is a metabolite, the major metabolite of the inflammatory COX-2 pathway, it would make sense physiologically that flaxseed would actually be a contributing factor to prostate cancer, breast cancer, and other types of cancer. And this isn't the only study that points out these mechanisms. Again, there are dozens of studies that verify the same physiological mechanisms behind the inflammatory prostaglandins, which are again comprised of polyunsaturated fats and unsaturated fatty acids like linoleic acid, which is a component of flaxseed. So going back to the study on flaxseed and its so-called therapeutic effects for prostate cancer, again, this study basically concluded that a flaxseed supplemented diet and fat restricted diet may affect prostate cancer biology and be a preventative therapy. So of course, from this study, it's very easy to think that flaxseed would be a remedy for prostate cancer. However, it's also very easy to overlook a more rationale theory or therapy for prostate cancer, which is possibly going on a low fat diet and not just any fat. It's very possible that these people with prostate cancer were largely consuming polyunsaturated fats and unsaturated fats from things like fast food, grains and legumes, wheat product, pastries, fried foods, things cooked with vegetable oils containing trans fats, again, mostly junk foods and processed foods, which most people with cancer tend to do or at least have a history of. So if these people have removed a large source of those things, consuming them on a regular basis almost every meal, and instead only consumed a small amount of ground flaxseed, it's very probable that their total intake of unsaturated fats, which are inflammatory, greatly decreased. So it's more likely that they removed a great portion of the inflammatory unsaturated fats from their diet and it's easy to point the finger at flaxseed at this point. Again, this study basically just isn't that thorough or complete. So I'm not trying to convince anybody to not consume flaxseed. I know tons of people love flaxseed. And the last time I made a video on it, it got a fair share of dislikes, which is unusual for us. So if you're somebody that's you know really into consuming them, all I'm suggesting is that you do more thorough research and potentially question the things that you're doing, especially if you're not seeing the results you're looking for. So I think the true remedy or a more rational approach for correcting prostate cancer and enlarged prostate would be to reduce your total estrogen levels in your body. And one major way to do that would actually be through decreasing your consumption of polyunsaturated fats. Now, if you consume no polyunsaturated fats and all you take is flaxseed, you're likely not consuming that much anyways, especially if you're also consuming healthy saturated fats like coconut oil, grass-fed lard, butter, or ghee, eating high-quality animal proteins, things like eggs and dairy, then it's likely your ratio of saturated fats to unsaturated fats is still balanced and in the direction of good health. So it's not necessarily that flaxseeds are gonna kill you or give you cancer, all this is pointing to is a bigger picture, which is balancing the intake of the fats in your diet to more saturated fats, more protective fats, and avoiding or minimizing the consumption of the unsaturated fats, which contain these unsaturated fatty acids like linoleic acid, which are building blocks to inflammatory mediators like prostaglandin E2, which activate the COX-2 pathway both which are heavily implicated in all sorts of cancers. So in addition to reducing your total estrogen levels, which most people could probably benefit from in the modern world, reducing your intake of the inflammatory unsaturated fats, I would also suggest taking a look at lowering both cyclooxygenase 2, or inhibiting it, I should say, and lowering the prostaglandin E2. And guess what are two fantastic herbs for doing this? Both nettle root, and also ginkgo biloba are known to be COX-2 inhibitors and they lower the prostaglandin E2 or inhibit its formation. And these are some of the major mechanisms behind nettle root's powerful anti 
prostate cancer effects and its beneficial effect on the prostate. And ginkgo biloba would also make a great addition to that by targeting some of the root causative factors for prostate enlargement and prostate cancer, which again are the activation of COX-2, the inflammatory pathway, and the inflammatory prostaglandin E2. So again, to very quickly recap, what I would suggest as an alternative approach for correcting benign prostatic hyperplasia or large prostate or prostate cancer, instead of trying to just consume a bunch of flax seeds or flaxseed oil, which would probably only worsen matters, especially if you're not removing the unsaturated fats from your diet, would be to instead reduce total estrogen, decrease the intake of unsaturated fatty acids and unsaturated fats, flaxseed being one of them, especially if you consume a lot of it, and take proactive steps to inhibit the COX-2 pathway and the prostaglandin E2, which you can successfully do by supplementing with nettle root and ginkgo biloba. Anyways, that brings this video to a close. If you've enjoyed it and found it helpful, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Share it with anybody that might find it useful or helpful. If you're interested in learning more, we have tons of additional videos here on the channel that talk all about the pathogenesis of prostate cancer, debunking some of the confusion around the whole pathogenesis or pathology of it and give you some helpful tips. We also have a blog as well as an online wellness academy for additional resources. And of course, we have an online tonic herb shop where you can learn more about both nettle root and ginkgo biloba as well as supplement with it. All of this information you can find in the description box below.